Hi. Now, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with something like this, where we've got y say equaling 2x plus 3. And when x equals 5, then what would y be? Just be 2 times 5 plus the 3, giving us 10 plus 3, which is 13. Nothing new, I hope. But what I want to do in this video is introduce you to an alternative notation, something we call function notation. And what we tend to use is something like this, by re replacing the y with f of x. Sometimes you can see it written as g of x or h of x. These are other ways that we can write this. And in this example, I've got f of x in place of the y is equal to 2x plus 3. And if I wanted to say, well, what's the value when x is 5? Then we write this. We replace the x with a 5. And we write f of 5 would be equal to 2 times 5 plus 3, which obviously gives us 13, as we had before. If I had, say, f of 1, then it would be 2 times 1 plus 3 total of 5. If I had f of 0, it would be 2 times 0 plus 3, which would end up being 3. So hopefully you get the idea that whatever I write in the bracket here, we would replace the variable, in this case x, with that value. So it can be an algebraic one. If I had f of a, I'm replacing the x with an a. So what am I going to get? It's going to be 2a plus 3. And if I had something like this, f of x plus 1, then I'm replacing the x with x plus 1. So it's going to be two lots of x plus 1 plus another 3. You might want to leave it like that, but I would say if you expand it, you're going to get 2x plus 2 plus another 3, giving us 2x plus 5. OK? Now, in this exercise, I've got seven questions that you might want to work through. The first set of questions I'm going to take you through is going to be involved with this other function. Notice I haven't written f here. I've chosen g. Remember I said that f, g and h are quite often the common functions that we get written. And you'll notice that the variable here is not x, it's t in this one. So we've talked about g of t, OK? So the questions that I've got here that we're going to work through, we've got to find out g of 3t in this second one, 5g of minus 1, and then solve this equation, g of t equals 1. Now I'm going to run through these three examples and going to get you to try these remaining four questions, OK? You might even want to have a go at these, so do pause the video at any point, OK? But I will run through these, and then we've got a summary down here, which I'll give you time to have a go at. So in this first one, g of 3t, we're going to replace the t here with 3t. So what are we going to get? You're going to get all of 3t squared in place of t squared minus 2 times, and you substitute the 3t in for that t there, and then plus the 1. And if you expand this out, you're going to end up with 9t squared minus 6t plus 1. When it comes to 5 times g of minus 1, replace the t with minus 1, and then times the whole result by 5. So if you do that, you're going to have 5 lots of all of minus 1 squared minus 2 times minus 1 plus 1. Work that out, you're going to end up with 5 times 1 plus 2 plus 1, 5 times 4 in other words, which is 20. Now, you can get equations. Here's a simple one. Solve g of t equals 1. So all I need to do is replace on the left hand side g of t with t squared minus 2t plus 1 and equate that to 1. So if you do that, you're going to end up with this equation, t squared minus 2t plus 1 equals 1. 
a simple quadratic equation with one to make it equal to zero and I can see that if I subtract one from both sides you're going to end up with t squared minus 2t equals zero. We'd want to factorise this and if you pull out t as a common factor then you've got t times all of t minus 2 equals 0. Put each factor equal to 0, that's going to lead to t equals 0 or t minus 2 equaling 0. And solving this equation, t would equal 2. So putting it all together, you've got t equals 0 or t equals 2. OK, so I've got four more examples for you to try. So give you time just to pause the video when you come back. I'll show you the solutions. OK, let's see how you got on if you had a go. So with number four, just got to multiply all of 5x minus 2 with 3. So if you do that, you're going to get 3 times all of 5x minus 2, and if you expanded the bracket, 15x minus 6. For f of 2x minus 1, all we need to do is replace the x then with 2x minus 1. And doing that, you're going to get 5 times all of 2x minus 1 minus 2. Expand the bracket out, group together any like terms, you're going to get 10x minus 5 minus 2. Grouping the minus 5 and minus 2 gives you 10x minus 7. For number 6, minus f of a, it's like minus 1 times f of a. So we replace the x with an a and multiply all of 5a minus 2 with negative 1. So if you do that, what are you going to get? Well, you should have this result. Minus 1 times all of 5a minus 2 is going to give you minus 5a plus 2. OK? Now, in this last one, I've got an equation again. With this, I've just got to replace the x in f of x with minus x and equate it to h of x, which is x squared, and then add 2. So if you substitute those in, you're going to get this result here. 5 times minus x, well that's going to be minus 5x, so it just tidies that equation up. We've got a quadratic equation again, so all I'm going to do is make it equal to 0 by adding 5x and 2 to both sides. Do that and you're going to get x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Factorise this, or you could use the quadratic formula, but it does factorise and you're going to end up with x plus 4 times x plus 1 equals 0. Put each of these factors equal to 0, x plus 4 equaling 0 and x plus 1 equaling 0 leads to x equaling minus 4 or x equaling minus 1. OK, so I hope you're able to get that function notation. Remember, you can see f, g, h of x. You most probably might see other letters being used. but Hopefully I've been able to show you how it's used, how we can use it in solving equations as well. OK, so if you like that, do give us a like and uh, don't forget, do subscribe to my channel if you want further updates of when I upload videos. Thanks for watching. Hopefully catch you in the next video. Bye for now.